Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for the 30th of December, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfit at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. And the readings are, you might consider them a little bit off. We're going to hear today about Gabriel's announcement to Mary that she is the chosen mother of the promised Messiah. So maybe a little bit behind, but still within the theme of our Christmas week here. So, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what the solid declaration of the formula of Concord says about this mysterious union of the divine and the human natures of Jesus Christ. Pretty powerful stuff. Let's begin first by God's grace alone, of course, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 89, some beautiful words of praise and acknowledgement of the glory of God. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness for all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens, you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Aren't those amazing words? And I love the, all the words of, uh, of eternity, of the, of the all generations kind of language. This is a God forever. And we, because of him, are forever as well. So now the birth of Jesus foretold from Luke chapter one. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Oh, sounds a little bit like uh, Psalm 89, doesn't it? And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be for me, to me, according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Just a quick commentary before we go into the solid declaration of the formula of Concord. This promise from Gabriel is for us as well when he says this, for nothing will be impossible for God. And then Mary in her response is a perfect way that God calls us to respond as well in all situations, even when things seem hopeless. She says, behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. So in those difficult places in life when it seems like it's just an impossible situation. Mary models for us what God calls us to be, humble servants of him. Let it be to me according to your word, dear Lord, because I know that nothing is impossible with you. Okay, so now uh, a discussion in the, in the formula of Concord um, about uh, the union of the human and divine natures. We believe, teach, and confess that God's Son from eternity has been a particular, distinct, entire divine person. Yet he is true, essential, perfect God with the Father and the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, he received also the human nature into the unity of his person. He did not do this in such a way that there are now two persons or two Christs. Christ Jesus is now in one person at the same time, eternal God, born of the Father from eternity, and a true man, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is written in Romans 9, 5. From their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. 
We believe, teach, and confess that this is, that it is the property of the divine nature to be almighty, eternal, infinite, everywhere present at the same time, and all-knowing. In other words, it agrees with the properties of the divine nature and its natural essence. On the other hand, these are properties of the human nature, being a bodily creation or creature, flesh and blood, finite and located in one place. It suffers, dies, ascends and descends. It moves from one place to another, suffers hunger, thirst, cold, heat, and the like. On account of this personal union and communion of the natures, Mary, the most blessed virgin, did not bear a mere man. But as the angel Gabriel testifies, she bore a man who is truly the son of the most high God. He showed his divine majesty even in his mother's womb because he was born of a virgin without violating her virginity. Therefore, she truly is the mother of God, and yet she remained a virgin. There, that's a, the foundational statement about the human and divine natures within Jesus Christ our suffering Savior, our newborn King now, as we celebrate Christmas week together. Um, any questions you have about that, uh, send me an email or call me or come and see me and we can talk more about it. But I warn you, the official stance of the Lutheran Church as we dig deeper into the human and divine nature combined in Jesus Christ is we don't really completely get it, nor are we meant to. Uh, it's beyond our ability to reason or to understand, but God gives us enough information for us to know and believe by faith that Jesus is true man, born of the Virgin Mary, and true God, tr totally begotten by the Heavenly Father and His eternal Son. Got it? Okay. <laughs> well, let's pray uh, hymn number 385, verse 3. It's called From East to West, and we'll pray the prayer of the day as well. <clears throat> For this, how wondrous, how, for this how wondrously he wrought, a maiden in her lowly place became in ways beyond all thought the chosen vessel of his grace. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the revelation you've given us, and we thank you for protecting us, Lord, from that which we cannot understand by not revealing all things at one time. Thank you, Lord, for the faith you've given us to understand uh, with our hearts and our souls that you truly have made this promise and have delivered through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forever. Amen. Well, this is my last morning prayer of the year and the last one that you'll see of 2021. There will be no morning prayer tomorrow uh, because we have a worship service tomorrow. Oh wait, what's it, 30th, 31st? Yeah, we do. That's right. At 6.30 p.m. on New Year's Eve here at Our Shepherd and also live streamed as well on YouTube, Facebook, and on our website. So the first, um, the first um, uh, morning prayer that you'll see again will be on Monday. That will be the 3rd of January, 2022. Wow. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. I hope to see you in worship or online and um, enjoy the celebration with your friends and your family. God's blessings.